Looking at our Create section, we will begin by discussing what we need to have available prior to the beginning of any EDI Atmosphere development. We will review the input contained in the message shape. We will review the output, which will be a MySQL database and we will focus on mapping our X12 field. Before beginning, I do want to point out that some of the information contained in here may seem light to anyone with an EDI background, but please hang in here because the class is designed to handle all levels of the EDI experience. So let's examine what you need to have available before beginning any EDI process. In Atomsphere, before creating an EDI process, you need to understand and have available the following your spec, and your sample data. You must have a good understanding of the data in your file. You need to understand and identify all the required segments and where they reside. Are they in the header, the body, or the summary? Finally, you need to understand the communication method that will be used to communicate with your customer. Where is the data coming from? Where is it going to? So let's begin with the data. For those of you who have never seen an EDI file before, you can see it has many specific sections. This is a scaled down version of the EDI data file we are going to use in class. By examining the code in detail, you will discover much of the information needed to map your 850. EDI uses a structured document format, allowing the Delbumi platform to build solutions using the specifications given by the company or trading partner. Usually, EDI is independent of the company's internal applications. The EDI format consists of connected document components, so let's take a look at the file. First is the delimiter. This is a unique character which separates each of the data elements. In EDI, the delimiter is usually a star. Next is the segment, which is the business document, logically grouped together with one or more data elements. It's a segment terminator. This is a unique character that identifies the end of a segment. In our case, it will be a tilde. The data element is the basic unit of information. It contains a set of values representing a single fact. The qualifier is a detailed data element predefined in Atomsphere to classify key data. In our example, IA is a qualifier for the REF segment. Loops are a section or group of repeating sub-segments in one document instance. Finally, the identifier instance is a flag in the EDI structure used to describe a detailed data set based on a numeric occurrence, qualifier, or both. This is a shortened version of our spec. It displays only the segments that we are going to use in class, so it'll fit on one slide. It contains three areas, the heading, the detail, and the summary. Reading this back from left to right, it displays an M in the segment if it's mandatory, the position number, segment ID, name, required if it's, if it's required, the maximum number of times used, if the loop repeats, and the number of times it repeats, and finally, some notes and comments. Now, I mapped EDI in an earlier life, and I needed to know each piece of information on my spec. However, in Atomsphere, there's only one thing that I need to know, and that is the segment ID, and Atomsphere will do the rest. Within the file, there are three areas or sections. They are known as the header, the body, and the summary, and each has both mandatory and optional data. For an 850, the following segments are required for the header. ST, which is the transaction set header. BEG, which is the beginning segment for the purchase order. REF, which is the reference identifier. TDD, which is the terms of sale or the, or the deferred terms of sale. DTM is the date time reference. EO1, where the baseline item detail is on the only mandatory segment in the body of an 850. The summary total has two pieces of information that are required segments, CTT, which is the transaction totals, and SE, which is the transaction set trailer. All other data passed into the file is optional. We'll begin our class with a partially built process and complete it by focusing on the EDI particular step, such as the trading partner, EDI profiles, and mapping. 
Now let's take a few moments and understand today's EDI integration scenario. Our company, Walgetz, purchases products from Boomi. Now in the past, Walgetz completed purchase orders via email. Our process will set up an EDI X12850 for Walgetz to systematically exchange documents with Boomi using the X12 standard. The Boomi developer will copy and paste a sample Walgetz purchase order into the message step. In the real world, we would read the data in from a disk, FTP, SFTP, or use an AS2 connector, which we're going to be doing in the second part of our class. The purchase order, the 850, is then translated into a MySQL database. So we can run this process many times in our test environment. We have set up a program command containing a SQL script to clear out the 850 from the MySQL database. And as I mentioned earlier, this class works with an existing process and we are going to be adding the detailed EDI information. This is the process that we're going to be using in this class. Our 850 EDI data is contained in the message shape. It will then move down branch one, where it will delete the existing PO data from the database. This allows only the latest data in the database. We will then load the data into a profile, map it, and write it to our database. Our process begins with the start shape, which has a no data option selected because it's not receiving data from any source. It expects an empty document, and the data is received from the message shape. All EDI data in this section is populated in the message shape. This allows us to review the data on the fly. Later in class, we will examine a different communication methods, and at that point we'll be receiving our data with a trading partner. This ends the start shape in receiving our input data. And as we've learned in our Boomi Essentials class, Atomsphere development is completed from the endpoints first, focusing on the connectors. We are writing our data to a MySQL database, so let's quickly review the core database connector options. It is the main component containing all the information needed to connect with a single database instance, and like many of our connectors, it consists of two parts. The connection, which is known as the where, this is the database type, location, and user login. The second is the operation, or the how, which houses the reader write statement or stored procedure call and record groupings. Since this is completed, we will not review this shape any further. With our input and output shapes completed, let's examine the 850 to database map. The database profile is added to the map, but there is no 850 profile. And our next section will address the EDI profile.